Hi everyone, Rocker here. Uh, I was asked a couple of weeks ago about what was did I consider to be my most memorable uh, scene that I did with one of the girls. And uh, I've done literally hundreds of scenes over the years. Uh, <laughs> um, I'm constantly playing uh, with my girls, whether privately or publicly or whatever. Um, so, but there was one that really had an impact on me. And it was about 15 years ago. And what it is, one of my girls is that they wanted to do a, a real psychological fear uh, slash CNC, uh, consensual non-consent kind of a scene. And so I, uh, we were going to a party um, in a couple of weeks and so I contacted uh, the organizer and said, hey, this is what I'm thinking of doing. And they had one room that was set aside from the, the rest of the party and you could put about 30, 40 people in there. Um, and so I asked if I could book that room and that I wanted to have people at the door guarding the door so that only certain people could be allowed in and also that I needed people within the room in order to be near the front to be able to block any kind of white nights uh, that might take place because there's going to be multiple triggers that were going to be happening and uh, my, my focus was on me and the girl. But I knew that with the people that were going to this particular party that there was going to be a lot of triggers happening. And I wanted to try to control the, the entire area as much as possible. So that was fine and dandy. The, the organizer was quite, quite excited about it and uh, helped me put everything into place. And we had people from the assembly that were directly involved as far as uh, doing uh, uh, security and being buffers and all those things. So, I, so everything was good that way. And uh, so the night of the party is I had rearranged in advance that uh, I was going to want to have a coffee and the people at the bar, they made sure that the coffee machine was, was uh, looked like it was turned off. And so, and that there wasn't any coffee available at that particular moment. So we got into the room, uh, everyone started filing in. A lot of people knew that something was going on and uh, the buzz uh, was definitely there that night and as far as people talking and that. And so we got in a room and there's about 30 people in the room uh, sitting and standing around the edge, uh, the back wall kind of stuff. And uh, <clears throat> so I was getting everything prepared and I told my, the girl that I was playing with uh, to quickly go get me a coffee. And so she left the room and she went to get me a coffee and she went to the bar and Lo and behold, is that they didn't have any coffee, but they would, uh, they had to clean out the machine or whatever, and there'd be coffee in about half an hour. So she came back into the room, and she was all dejected and a little bit concerned. She goes, Master, they don't have any coffee. And, uh, <laughs> and right away, is, uh, which I knew was going to happen, so I turned around, and they had a punch in the wall. They had a cinder block wall, and they had a punch in the wall and said, Fuck, unbelievable. And so I turned to one of my other girls and said, you know, go get me a coffee. And of course, they left the room and they came back within a minute or so with a hot black coffee that I wanted. Now, the girl I was playing with, she was just like, didn't really know what was going on, which was all, again, part of the scene. So at that point, I ended up putting her on the cross. And with the majority of times with my girls, I don't tie them up or handcuff them. They need to stay there on their own, which is more difficult for them because they need to be in control of themselves. But at the same time, they're not able to lash out or whatever. And this girl is very much a, was very much a masochist. Uh, she enjoyed pain. Uh, she really wanted to, to have a night that would really uh, for the back of letter words, or uh, uh, other words, would basically just fuck with her mind. And so that's what we, we uh, what I had planned for her, and what we had discussed for two, three weeks in advance. So, <clears throat> so right then they had a blackboard there, and I ended up writing on the blackboard in capital letters, "I am sorry, master." And I turned to her, and I said, "You know, there's all these people here. All I wanted for you was to get me a coffee." And you couldn't even do that. And I had a stern look on my face. And I said, what does the board say? And she says, I'm sorry, master. And she started to, to choke up inside a little bit. And I said, I'm really disappointed, really disappointed. And at that point we started to see, and there's different things that 
that we did throughout the scene that uh, as far as tickling her is she didn't like to be tickled at all. And so she had to stand there in display, basically hands behind, and I would start tickling her. And I would tell her not to laugh. And of course, with many girls, that's pretty hard to do. And of course, she would start to giggle on that. And I said, I told you not to laugh. I said, what does that board say? And she goes, I'm sorry, bastard. I said, don't laugh. And I do it again. And I had a couple of the other girls that were told in advance that I wanted them to start laughing out loud, which of course, you know, that if some people start laughing, it's contagious. Everyone else starts laughing. And of course, the girl I was playing with, she started laughing because they were laughing. And I got upset and uh, I ended up pulling all of my hits, but I ended up pulling her and punching her, hitting her in the stomach and ended up pulling it. So it basically was just a little thud, didn't do any damage, but it looked it looked really bad. And, uh, and just something that she enjoys as well. So I ended up doing that uh, a couple of times and I'm slapping her across the face, and which again, she enjoys. And it's all consensual, but it, it put her in a real headspace that she wasn't really sure what was going on anymore. And there was a couple of times I remember looking at her and she had this fear in her eye that she couldn't differentiate between reality and play. And when those times happened, I, I just, slowly leaned into her quietly and said, D, are you okay? Remember, you're just playing. This isn't real. And then she would look at me and she would gather herself and everything was good. And uh, there was another time that, uh, that uh, we, were, we were playing and, and it got fairly intense. I remember picking her by her, her throat and then picking her off the ground and just holding her there for a couple of seconds were off the ground on that and putting her down and basically said you know I want you know I'm gonna take a sip of my coffee so I am taking a sip of the coffee and she ended up looking around at the girls and her mascara was all all down her face and she ended up looking at the girls very sympathetic uh, and yeah, they sort of looked her back kind of thing and I turned and I caught her looking at him and I said what are you looking at look straight forward you're not supposed to be looking at him else and and I said what does the board say I'm sorry master I said damn straight and, and I got upset uh, well pretended to get upset kind of things and ended up slapping her face again and this went on this whole psychological thing where it was, it was like a cycle is that I would basically faint to be able to be very angry with her and then basically pull back and faint that I was very disappointed with her and then just it kept going, it was a roller coaster of emotions for her and for a lot of people in that room. And at one point is one of my other girls uh, just let out a giggle just hysterically because she was nervous herself. And I turned to her and said, what are you laughing at? And she just said, nothing master. And I, I had my single tail and I had him snapping it above her head, about this far off her head but it ended up hitting the wall behind her. And her eyes got, got really big. And I said, don't lie to me. Don't ever lie to me. And at this point, there was two or three other girls end up uh, in a room, they end up getting up and they end up leaving because it was too much for them, which I knew that was gonna happen. And at another point, I ended up taking this girls that I was seeing with, I took her collar off and I threw it across the floor and said, you know, I don't even know why, why I had this collar is, you know, you couldn't even get me a cup of coffee. Do you know how disappointed, I, a simple cup of coffee, you couldn't even get me a cup of coffee. And she's like sobbing and that, and I said, what does the board say? And again, I'm sorry, master. And then, do you really mean that? Or are you just reading it? And it was this really deep psychological uh, scene that was going on. Now what ended up happening afterwards is that once the scene was over, gave her a big hug, the other girls came, they're all giving her a hug and everyone's crying. Uh, you know, they're all crying together <laughs> and they're a mess. They don't go in and it'll wash her. Now there is a, a lot of people out in the main room heard what was going on and, and things were being relayed out to them. And, and when I ended up throwing the, the collar on the floor, a lot of the girls out in the main room basically automatically went to their, their own collars. It's like, oh, that would never happen to me. Oh my God, you know, that's terrible. And the way that they were. And so 
uh, my girls end up going into the washroom to get cleaned up and everything else and there's people coming into the washroom left right and center saying how terrible it was and and you know da 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 and that the girl I was playing with said no uh, no it was exactly what I wanted you know we had talked about this for weeks everything was good and everything else but it had a big impact on everybody that was there in fact throughout uh, the majority of southern Ontario because people like to talk is that you know they heard different versions of it but the whole thing was uh, consensual non-consent it was definitely a different level a deeper level of psychological fear that was imposed but the, the biggest thing that happened was afterwards and that uh, immediately uh, the next day you know, this girl ended up going on holidays with her husband and they went up north and there wasn't any uh, Wi-Fi around so when I tried to contact her to find out how she was for three days I wasn't able to get a hold of her and so that had a big impact on me because I was worried you know people were talking and I was getting all these nasty emails about how terrible I am that you know da 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 and she deserves somebody better and all the all the nonsense white knight stuff and and so I was starting to doubt myself you know did I go too far and uh, she finally got a hold of me on on the Wednesday and said no it was the best thing she's ever had it, it's exactly what she wanted and she was thanking me up and down and and um and her husband was cool with it the whole bit but it but it had a big impact on me because when i went to follow through i wasn't able to and so i still remember that to this day is that everything had been planned meticulously before the scene during the scene and even immediately after the scene as far as the girls looking after her, going to the washroom, cleaning her up, and then she just basically lay across my lap for an hour after that, you know, snuggled up in her blanket. But it was, it was, it was the next three days that I didn't account for, that I couldn't get a hold of her, and it's the first time that's ever happened that I couldn't follow through or get a hold of her to find out how she was doing, uh, just to be able to touch base or whatever, and that had a huge impact on me. So. A couple of things I just want to share. Um, first of all, is that if you are going to do something like that, uh, you need to make sure that you do have buffers in place because there will be people that will try to, to stop the scene, um, basically because of their own issues or whatever. Um, and secondly, is you know, make sure that you're keeping touch for the next two or three days because when you're diving that much into the mental state of an individual it does have an impact on their lives and it's something that is, sometimes it takes a while to be able to get back to, to normalcy as far as what is reality what was fantasy what is real what was play so you need to be uh, reassuring of that and be able to let people know that those you know that it was just play and uh, and make sure that you discuss things through that's the, the only other thing I could say. So that's just something I want to share with you. It was probably one of my most memorable scenes, but it also, it had a bigger impact on me than it did her. Because that night, you know, she slept on my lap. She went home, she slept like a baby kind of thing. The next day she was caught with her husband and everything was fine. Where me for three days, because I couldn't get a hold of her or contact her, I was a mess. So um, just wanted to share those things with you. And uh, you know, Enjoy singing, enjoying having fun, but um, that was just something that was asked of me and I thought I would just share it publicly with everyone.